Good evening, everyone. What a great joy to see all of you uh, and welcome to Psalm and the Great Awakening with Reverend Dr. Joshua Yoon, the president and founder of Vision TV. And I would like to invite all of you to come and join us together. If you're the worship team, you're the prayer team, uh, the drama team, we need all of you in the choir as well. Just come and uh, sing together and worship the Lord together. And uh, Psalms is one of the expression that David and the many psalmists that express themselves and asking the Lord for strength and for the wisdom and for the blessing and for the protection. And at the same time, we also pray that some can also, as we are singing and worshiping the Lord, we also pray that the Lord is going to bring the revival. And that is the purpose of Vision TV. Vision TV is committed to the great commandment. Vision TV is committed to the great commission and Vision TV is committed to the great awakening. So we'd like to invite you to come and join us together and uh, as we begin for the word of the Lord today with Psalm 116, let us have a word of prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word and we thank you for the opportunity that we can come to worship you and continue to ask and to seek your face and believe and, de and declaring and proclaiming your promise ask and it will be given father we are asking for the nation we are asking for the vision 20 percent that in every district in every places in every county in every cities in every nation there will be an increase of 20 percent of the population will come to know you father we pray for the unity for the revival and mission of the body of, of christ across the, the globe we are praying for the great awakening the great revival is coming to this land and the nation Lord, hear our prayer. We give you all the praise and the honor and glory in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And tonight, uh, let us open together in the book of Psalm chapter 116. And we have been going through with many the book of Psalm. And this is what the word of the Lord in Psalm 116 said. That I love the Lord. Okay, that would be a wonderful start. I love the Lord. For he heard my voice, he heard my cry for mercy, and because he turned his ear to me, and I will call on him as long as I live. And that is the promises right there, straight there in the Bible. The God already give us the promises. And the thing that I would like to share with you tonight is very simple. That God hear our prayers, and God answer our prayer. God turn his ear to our prayer as his promises but he said he heard my cry for mercy and because he turned his ear to me and i will continue to call on him as long as i live many times that we have been calling different peoples yes and it's also needed sometimes there are certain things in life that when we call other people cannot help us and many times there should be some anguish some secret and even some of the pain that we see that we are not able to overcome. But we pray that the Lord is going to bless us, that He is going to confirm that He heard our cry. And in His mercy, He is going to do great things for us. And what are the things that you and I are praying and believing that God is going to answer our prayer? And this is what the Word of the Lord said in verse number 3 The cords of death entangled me The anguish of the grave came over me I was overcome by distress and sorrow Then I called on the name of the Lord And the Lord saved me The Lord is gracious and righteous And our God is full of compassion The Lord protects the unwary And when I was brought low He saved me Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. As you, can, as you notice that in every situation that Sanders and David begin to tell us that God is gracious. In a moment of fear, God is gracious. In a moment of injustice, God is righteousness. God, God is righteous. In a moment of lack of love or loneliness, you and I will know that God is full of compassion. And in the moment that we are unwary, you and I will know that in those moments, God is our Savior. He's going to provide us the salvation. 
in the time that we have no rest for our soul. At that time, God's goodness continues to reveal to every one of us. And in the time that we are going to face death, in the time that we are facing tears and suffering and pain, and we continue to see that God's presence is there available for us. So let me put together in this way, that when God hears us, when I'm crying, God hears us when the cords of death entangle me. When death was surrounding me, God hears my cry. God hears my prayer when the anguish of the grave came over me. When distress and sorrow are on, over me, God hears my prayer. When weariness is my name, when tiredness is my name, God hears my prayer. When I'm low at the pits, God hears my prayer. When I'm restless, God hears my prayer. When my eyes are filled with tears, God hears my prayer. When I'm stumbling, God hears my prayer. When I'm facing the affliction within me, God hears my prayer. When I have the pain, God hears my prayer. When I face the struggle, God hears my prayer. My, my prayer. When I, you and I are going through the financial shortage, God hears our prayer. When you and I are so lonely in the moment that we cannot even trust somebody else, God hears our prayer. When we have no wisdom, when we lost the direction, God hears our prayer. So I would like to encourage you and I together. Those are the promises of God. And God promised that He is going to hear our prayers. In all of the situation, when we are in the good time or in the bad time, when, when we are high or when we are low, when we are facing death or when we are facing life, God still hears our, our cry and our prayer. When we face the righteousness or unrighteousness, God still hears our prayer. When we see that the people in our favor are not in our favor, God still hears our prayer. And in verse number 9, David said that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. And I trusted the Lord when I say I'm greatly afflicted. So he said even though in a time of affliction, he said that I'm alive. I'm still living in the land of the living. I'm not living in the life of disappointment. I'm not going to live in the land of distress. I'm not going to live in the land of poverty. I'm not going to live in the land of suffering. I'm not going to live in the land of hopeless. I'm not going to live in the land of powerless. I'm not going into, to live in the land of no direction. Because God is with you and I. So tonight, may the word of the Lord will continue to encourage you and I. Every one of us, and we just dedicate our life into His hand. And remember that God hears every prayer of us. And God knows what are the things that you and I are going through. And He cares for us. He knows and He saw what you and I have been going through. Whether we are restless or whether we are struggling, whether we don't know what to do, whether we need the wisdom from God, or whatever the things that you and I are still in need of His grace. God hears our prayer. And in verse 11, In my alarm I said, Everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all His goodness to me? And I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. And here I want you to know something. Be careful. Some of the words of other people may be a deception to us. Or maybe the devil is a liar and they try to destroy our life. So when, in, when you and I are in the moment that you want to commit suicide, and I'm speaking to those who are feeling hopeless in your situation, have no direction in your, in, in, in your life, and for those who find that life is meaningless and you want to commit suicide, and maybe you hear the voice, the devil is saying that life is not worth of living. Maybe they said that your life is meaningless. They, maybe they are telling you and the voice said that just end your life. 
just end it here. Don't continue to sustain your suffering anymore. Don't prolong your oppression anymore. Don't prolong your unhappiness anymore. Don't prolong the meaningless of life anymore. Don't believe in anyone. Don't trust anyone anymore. Many of those are the lies that come into your life. <coughs> and I'm praying, sorry, and I'm praying for you tonight. That God is going to touch you. And God is going to speak into your heart. If you're willing to receive Him. If you're willing to open your heart to Him. There are so many times in life that many people just have the thought of killing themselves. Whether by hang them up or maybe use a gun and just end their life. Or some people begin to have the loss of the meanings of life and just go to live in a white life in party, drinking, smoking. And many of them also end their life in drug addictions. And as a result, we begin to have some of the incurable sicknesses and diseases. And you know that what I'm talking about. But I'm telling you, regardless of the situation that you are facing, just like David said, even in the moment, in the situation of death, in the situation that he was entangled by death, everything surrounding him at that time was darkness. There was no hope. There's no ways out. There's no other choices. There's no nothing that they can see that tomorrow will bring them a good future. And yet in those moments, David and the psalmist continue to say that God is righteous. God is saving our life. God is faithful. God is loving. God is caring. He is there. And He is going to hear your cry and my cries. He is going to answer your prayer and my prayer. He is going to respond to our calling upon Him and my calling upon Him. Do not believe in the lies anymore. Do not believe that the people said you have a low self-esteem. Do not believe in the people that said that you are inferior to other people. Do not believe to the word of people that say God is not real. Those are the deception. Those are the lies. Do not believe in the word of the people that said no one can help you. And do not believe in the word of those people that said your destiny is determined by the moon and by the stars. Do not believe in the word of those people who said you have only a few months to live. Do not believe in the, in the lies and the deception of other people who said better end yourself and end your suffering. No, there is still a great hope for every one of us. There is still a bright future for you and I when you and I are coming to know Jesus. If someone said that is your destiny, that you are going to, to, to suffer with that. But I'm telling you the good news. That our God is merciful. And He is going to do the great thing. A new thing for you once again. Do not believe to other people who said you cannot do anything. You cannot amount to anything. You are going to die in your sickness. No one can help you out of your prison. No one will help you out of your situation. No one can help you to overcome your hardship. But the psalmist said in verse number 12, His goodness will come back to me, and His cup of salvation will overflow me, and His presence is with me, and He set me free from all the chains. And that is the promises of God. His, his goodness is come back, coming back to you and I. Remember, there are many good things are coming into your life. Do not think that the world is very dark, and do not think that only bad things and bad lucks and bad fortune just happen to you. But believe together that His goodness, God's goodness, will come back to you and I. And His cup of salvation will overflow. And meaning to say that God will provide His salvation upon our life when we come upon Him. And His presence will be surrounded with us. We don't feel lonely. We don't feel disappointed. We are not going to be fearful anymore. We are not going to be intimidated anymore. Because God's presence covers us. And he prepared a table in front of our enemies. When his presence covers us, and he's going to set you and I from the chains. 
The Bible said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 said, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For anyone who asks will receive. And anyone who seeks will find. And anyone who knocks, the door will be opened. And that is the promises of God. And God just said, more important, what man is there amongst you? Who, when his son asks for a love, a prayer, and then you give him a stone? No. We love our children and we want to give them the best in exactly the same way. God is going to give us the best. Ask and you will receive. Luke chapter 1 from Luke chapter 11 verse 9 said, So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. That is a confirmation from God himself. He is speaking to you in Matthew chapter 21 verse 22. And all things you ask in prayer, believing, and you will receive. Matthew chapter 21 verse 22. So that in all things you ask in prayer and believe, that is the key. Not only we ask, but we also believe. And then we will receive. How many of you want to receive? How many of you believe God is going to open doors for your business? He's going to open doors for your home. He's going to open doors for your situation. John chapter 14, from verse 13, 14 said, Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in me. Son, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. That is the word of John, chapter 14, from verse 13 to 14. That anything you ask in His name and believe, God is going to give it to us. So what are the things that you want to ask right now? What are the things that you have been struck, struck, struck for? And you want God to bring a miracle into your life? Why don't you come to Him right now and just pray and worship Him? And the word of the Lord said, just ask anything in His name. You and I will receive it. Whether it is sickness, whether it is the creative creativity that you need, whether it is the wisdom that you are asking from God, for God to give you. Solomon asked wisdom from God. And he became the greatest, the wisest man all over the world. And many people ask for the forgiveness and they receive the forgiveness of God for their life. Many people ask for the healing power of God upon their physical body and they receive it. Many ask for the healing and restoration of their family relationship and their prayer have been answered. Many, many people have been asked for the direction and they also receive the answer from God. Many people ask for the providence from God and God answers their prayer. Many ask to love others, to forgive others. And God help them to do so. Why don't we come just come to Him? Many people ask for a new life. And as I was speaking to you a while ago, that you need to know that you are beautiful in the eyes of God. You need to know that your life is very meaningful. You need to know that God can make your life anew. You need to know that our God is powerful and He's still given us a second chance to make our life better. If we call Him and ask Him, do not give up our life easily. God created us. He is our Father. He wants us to call Him our Father. Why don't we call Him right now? Why don't we call Him and ask Him to come into our life? Hear these praises from a grateful heart. It's time I think of you, the praises God love you so. Oh, uh -huh. 
I'm a grateful one Each time I think of you The bracelet's thought Love you so much Jesus Love you so much God love you so much And God want to set us free and God wants you and I to come back to Him. So would you please just come to Him. May the Lord will bless us. And we also welcome you to the Global Worship and Revival Congress at Anaheim Convention Center on September 19, 20, 21, 22 at Anaheim Convention Center this year of 2019. We would like to invite team to come together, the worship team, the band team, and the trauma team, the prayer team, the reception team, let us come together. Would you please contact us? May the Lord bless us and welcome to Psalm and the Great Awakening. God bless us all. Amen.